sunshine. Another truly humbling experience. What a day, honestly. Good morning everybody, it is race day for Iron Man Texas, but I hope you're doing well, it is great to see you again, and let's get going. She's clean, she's looking fast. All done. We're ready for a good day. Let's go. All right, so I have been given permission by Iron Man to film this race, which I'm super excited about, but I just spoke to the head referee to make sure everything was okay, and he said that I am good to go, and it is not a protestable offense because it's already allowed. So I'm good to go. Good with my camera. Let's go get ready for the swim. We're gonna have a great day. We're on our way to the swim start. The whole crew's here. We're an hour out from the race. We're just gonna go take a, it's about a mile walk over there. It's a nice easy stroll. Just uh, relax and enjoy. Big raceway. Yep, we're good. <laughs> So it is wetsuit legal this morning. The water temperature is just under 76 degrees. So it's a little warm out there. I need to make sure, I am wearing my wetsuit, but I need to make sure I don't swim too fast and overheat, because in this Texas heat, I might never cool down. Sure. So I just need to stay cool in the swim, take it chill, but we're getting close now. I do need to hurry, I gotta get this wetsuit on, because I'm a little bit behind. <laughs> Iron Man Texas, we gotta go do this thing. I'm doing it for them. We're gonna have so much fun out there. Let's go race, baby. Let's do it. Let's go. And just like that, we were underway at Ironman Texas. So I like to wear my watches when I do these races, not because I'm constantly looking at it, but because the Garmin I wear laps every 500 yards, which helps like mentally break up the race. Like honestly, I don't look at what time I'm at. It's just like, oh, I know I've hit 2000 yards now, 2500. So it's just really good to help break up the swim. But anyway, I was hoping to swim a 52 or a 53 minute swim. I'd been talking to my coach the day before and we thought that was a reasonable guess. Like. Yes, I could be a little bit slower, I could be a little bit faster, but when I got out of the water and I saw 49.05 on my watch, I was so excited. Like, honestly, I did not expect that to happen, and it just made my day, to be honest. I know I came through, I've never seen it before, but Texas had this, like, inflatable timer at halfway during the swim, and I went through that, and I did. I took a peek at my watch, just because I was like, okay, like, where am I at? And I saw just over 24 minutes, and I honestly had to do a double take. I was... It didn't feel like I was swimming that fast. I didn't think that I had that in me. But then again, I was like, like we can like we can go sub 50 here. That's what I was thinking. So I, I kept pushing. Um, but yeah, I was it was a great start today, to be honest. I was so happy to do that. So I get out of the swim. I've seen my watch. I'm like the I have the biggest smile on my face. I run through, I grab my bag, I see my mom, and I'm like, let's go. I go into the change tent take off my wetsuit, put my helmet on, go running towards my bike, 
only to realize that I've forgotten my visor on my helmet. I did turn around and thankfully it was in my transition bag because I remember putting it there the day before. But I was like, I cannot bike 112 miles with this crazy headwind that we have today without my visor. So I did lose about 30 seconds doing that. But then again, I swam faster than I was expecting. So I knew it wasn't a big deal. So I've got my helmet figured out. I run to my bike and see my mom and my coach standing at the end of the aisle. And my coach is screaming, first overall, first overall. And my mom's like, let's go, Ben. I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like at this point, I was so fired up. And I love like when everyone screams at me, like, especially my family my coach like but whoever it is it doesn't really matter like i love the energy at these races and when i have the energy like probably more early on in the race than, than later i love to like kind of reciprocate and give it back like i just i don't know i love doing that so i'm screaming at them they're screaming at me but i grab my bike i'm fired up at this point and then i head out for 112 miles go ben 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 Let's go, baby, let's go. So at this point in the bike, I already knew that I was in first place. So I was super excited and I knew that I just needed to stick to my plan because it's a long day out there and there was no reason for me to just start hammering and, and doing something crazy. So I also knew that I'd swam a bit too hard. I also like sprinted through transition, which wouldn't have helped, but my heart rate was like 165, 170 getting onto the bike, which is way too high. So the first part of the bike, I definitely took it easy, made sure to get that heart rate down and was just prepared for a long old day on the bike. Go Ben! Woo! Yeah! All righty, let's go baby. It looks like we're sitting in first overall age group right now. Just need to get my heart rate down, relax and settle into it. But let's go baby. Woo! I love this. Oh yeah, mile 10, there it is. Let's go. Only 102 miles to go. Woo. Come on, Ben. Woo. Just hit 50 miles. We're just over two hours in. My legs are not feeling amazing, but um, we're doing okay. We're pushing through it. We're staying on top of our nutrition, but I am having a good time, so that's good. So at this point in the bike ride, everything's going pretty well. Like, okay, I wasn't feeling 100%, but I was feeling pretty darn good. My nutrition was going well. The only really bad part about the bike ride was the headwind. If you don't know the Texas course, it's like two big loops on the toll road. It's like a closed toll road. It takes you like 20 miles to get there, but then you're on there for like the majority of the bike ride. And one direction is completely into a headwind. You're going like 18, 19 miles an hour. You turn around and then you're going like 31, 32 without even like trying. It's, it was crazy. And I'd been told before the race to expect that like one way is going to be a headwind. Then you'll have a tailwind. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, like I biked in windy conditions before. This was different. This was absolutely nuts. Um, we wouldn't know till after the race. The announcer was like, oh, yeah, that was like one of the windiest days we've ever had. I was like, great, like awesome. <laughs> But anyway, it was bad, but we were dealing with it. We were making it work. And then I think about mile 65 is when I passed my parents for the first time. And my dad's holding up a whiteboard with the gaps to the to the people behind me. And I think the gap was up to nine minutes. I had over the second place person. And honestly, my jaw just dropped. I could not believe it. I was so happy to see that. And nothing. I felt like I was invincible at that point, to be honest. 80 miles in. Let's go. I think the turnaround's up here. At least I hope it is, because this headwind is killing me. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, finally. Ah, righty. Let's head back into town. So I finally make the turnaround. I could not be happier at this point. I was like, we got 30 miles left, a massive tailwind behind us. We can just cruise. We can keep the heart rate low get the legs ready to run, and we're on the home stretch now. But we get a few more minutes down the road, we've got a nice tailwind, and then out of nowhere, it all starts to fall apart. My left side just completely seizes up, like I'm cramping like I've never cramped before. I'm really struggling to breathe, like I can't take a deep breath, I can't go down to my aero bars, and I was really starting to worry. Like it's gonna sound stupid, 
but I thought I was having a heart attack. Like it was so painful. Breathing was painful. My chest was hurting. I, I've never experienced anything like it and I honestly didn't know what to do. But I kept going and I knew my parents were up the road like another few miles. So I just, I stayed out of my aero bars. I, I couldn't push power at this point. So I just made it to them. I pulled over for a second and I was like, mom, like I'm struggling to breathe. Like I don't know what to do. Like I obviously wanted to keep going, but I was like, is this something more serious where I should just stop right now? Like, should we, should we get an ambulance? Like I thought it could be really bad, but we just came to the conclusion that I would keep going. Like I keep it easy and uh, we'll just have to see what happens. Cause I did not want to call the race. Like it was going so well. And Oh, I was, uh, it, I was almost heartbroken to be honest, sitting there on the side of the road. Like, what have I, like, what has happened? Like, I don't know what to do. Like, is this something I can recover from? Oh, I was not a happy man. But I managed to carry on. The rest of the bike ride was horrendous. I couldn't push power. Like, I could barely go in the air bars for more than a couple minutes. And I couldn't take a deep breath. I, could, I was struggling to breathe. And for some reason, like, it affected my lungs, and then maybe I wasn't getting enough air in, so then my legs started to really hurt. It was just, it was all downhill from there, to be honest. It was it was not a good time. But we get to the end of the bike ride, I've, like, started to pick up my cadence, get my legs ready to run, and I'm, like, I've kind of, like, tuned out what's happened, because I'm, like, okay, maybe that was just, like, a fluke, like, I don't know, maybe I can still run, though. Like, I was fully expecting myself to, like, even in the back of my head, I was, like, okay, like, maybe we can't run, like, this is not good. But then I was like, no, like switch that off. Like we're going to do this run and it's going to be fine. So that's what I hoped. Come into transition and like I give my bike to the person. They take it from me and I like I'm sprinting through transition. At this point, I'm feeling great. Maybe it's like, I don't know, like I got so much adrenaline that I'm like excited to run. I'm excited to be off the bike. I go through transition. I get my bag, everything ready. I grab my camera, put my shoes on. It's going well. I'm excited to start running. I leave the tent, I head out on the run, and I see my mom, and this is when it's like, you know I'm not doing well, because at this point in the race, I should still have so much energy that I should be yelling back at her, but I'm like so zoned in, like very worried that any minute I could just like not be able to run anymore, and unfortunately, just a few minutes down the road, not even a mile into the run, I had to start walking for the first time. This is so bad. Uh, not even a mile in. I'm walking. Uh. Every single breath I took for 26.2 miles was painful. There were some parts of the run where I was running sideways, hunched over, because the cramp was just taking over my body. Like, I couldn't breathe properly. And um, I was not in a good place, to be honest. I wanted to stop, but... I was so thankful. I mean, my coach was like bunny hopping around the course and it was so funny because I would start walking and then I would hear in the distance like, Ben, let's go. What are you doing? She just, she appeared all over the course. Like she was never biking right next to me, but she would just like appear every so often. And it always happened to be when I started walking and it was, <laughs> we talked about it after the race. We were laughing about it. It's like, I was, whenever I stopped to walk, I would like have to look around and make sure that she wasn't next to me because she was going to scream at me to keep running. But um, I do have to say thank you to my coach because without her out there, I would not have finished that race. Honestly, like it would have been so easy for me to just stop and pull over. But the fact that she was there, my parents were there and everyone out there was cheering me on. The, the amount of people out there that said, come on, Ben, you got this. Like the athletes, this is, this is why I love triathlons. Like people, when you're walking out there, like you, you're struggling, everyone is trying to help you. Like no one's like, oh, look at him. Like he's struggling. Like, yes, I've beat him. No. They're like, what can I do? What can I, can I give you some salt? Do you need some water? Like the triathlon community is so special. And uh, every race that, like every time you have to, you have a problem like that, you really just, I love the sport. I love it. I love the people in it. So everyone out there, thank you. You are amazing. And you got me to the end of that race. But we kept pushing. We did what we could. And we eventually do make it to the end. And I've said this before, I'll say it again. Regardless of how, when, or what time you get to the finish line of an Ironman, you will be smiling. Like, the sense of accomplishment for just finishing that race alone is 
is amazing, and that's why we do these sports. To get to that red carpet, it could take you eight hours. It could take you 17 hours. Like, the sense of accomplishment is just through the roof. And and I hadn't had a great day at that point. Like, yes, it had gone well from the start, but then something went wrong, and it was just a struggle fest for the last, like, four hours of the race. But I hit that red carpet, and I lit up. I was so happy. Like, nothing. there was nothing else in my mind besides just happiness and excitement that we had done it and we'd made it to the end. Ben, you've done it! You've done it! So my parents had been yelling at me throughout the race that there were five slots in my age group for Kona, which never really registered with me. I guess my mind wasn't all there when I was running. But uh, we get to the end. I cross the finish line and I talk to them for the first time. They're like, Ben, you did it. Like, you qualified for Kona. I was like, what do you mean? Like, I was expecting there to be, like, one spot in my age group for Kona, and there were five, which is amazing. So I was super happy to learn that. And um, thank goodness we kept pushing and didn't just pull out of the race because it was all worth it at the end of the day. I mean, regardless of if we got the Kona slot or not, it would have been worth it because finishing an Ironman is just – it's a uh, – it's a bucket list thing that you just, you have to experience. Another truly humbling experience. What a day, honestly. But we did it. I'm happy. We made it to the end. Oh my God. Crazy, crazy. Can you go to Kona? But um, I, I couldn't have done it without my coach, without my family, without all the support out there. I was just, it got me to the end, to be honest. It would have been, like I said, so easy for me to stop. Heck, I wanted to stop at like mile one of the run. I'm not going to lie. But um, we pushed through it. And thankfully, we did get that Kona slot, which I am looking back at it. I'm so happy now because that, uh, that was the goal. And we might not have achieved or had the race that I wanted to have, but we got that Kona slot. I have signed up for another Ironman, so we'll have another crack at it before Kona. But look, at the end of the day, it wasn't all that bad. The signs were there of a really good day. The swim was amazing. Through 80 miles of the bike was amazing. We opened up a 13-minute lead. And um, yeah, we'll put it together one day. Texas, uh, it wasn't all there, but we had a great time. And third place, Ben Tolliday. Wasn't the prettiest, but we got it done. Well, that is a wrap on Ironman Texas. Not the prettiest of days, but we fought through it, we got to the end, and we secured that Kona qualification. So that is a win. And uh, all in all, not too bad. But that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, be happy, be healthy, and be yourself. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.